In this lecture, we introduce Kirchhoff's current law, which is one of the most important and useful concepts in the analysis and design of electric circuits. We also demonstrate the usefulness of this concept by solving for unknown currents in a few simple situations. Well, we begin our introduction to Kirchhoff's current law, which we often call KCL for short, by looking at a simple situation where we have one current flowing into a node and one current flowing out of the node. Now a node in a circuit is a place where two or more wires are connected and Kirchhoff's current law simply tells us that the sum of the current flowing into the node must equal the sum of the current flowing out of the node. Now for this simple example this means that the current I2 which we've given a reference direction as flowing out of the node must be equal to the current I1 which we've given a reference direction flowing into this node. Now another way to write this would be that I2 minus I1 is equal to zero. Well, we can use the same principle with three wires connected in a node. In this example, the currents I2 and I3 have reference directions out of the node, and the current I1 has a reference direction into the node. Therefore, the sum of I2 and I3 must be equal to I1. or I2 plus I3 minus I1 must be equal to zero. Now it's important to note that we're writing these equations relative to the reference directions that we've defined for the currents, not relative to the values the currents take. It's possible, for instance, that some or all of these currents will have negative values associated with them, but it's the reference direction for the currents and only the reference directions for the currents that we use to write down these KCL equations. Well, here's another example to further illustrate the principle of KCL. In this case, the currents I2 and I3 have reference directions out of the node and the currents I1 and I4 have reference directions into the node. Therefore, we can use KCL to write down the relationship that I2 plus I3 minus I1 minus I4 Is equal to zero. Again, we're summing all of the currents with reference direction out of the node and subtracting from that the sum of all the currents with the reference direction into the node. Well, now let's look at a more complicated example of a circuit with several circuit elements and several nodes. I've labeled the nodes node A, B, and C, and these are the places where we have more than two wires coming together. Now let's begin with node A. Now at node A we have the current in this direction which is I1 and that flows out so we'll keep that as a positive. And then we'll move here and look we've got a current I3 flowing in that direction so we'll subtract that one Then we have a current I6 flowing in from that direction, so we'll subtract that one. And then the current due to this dependent, this current controlled current source is flowing in, so we'll subtract that current, which is 4 I1 of T. And that's all of the currents flowing in or out of this node, so we'll sum that and set it equal to 0.
Now let's look at node B. At node B, we'll start here. We've got current I1, which is now flowing into this node. So we'll have a negative I1. And we have current I3 flowing out. And we have the current I2 flowing in. And that sum is equal to 0. That's worth noting something here. When we wrote the equations for node A, I1 was flowing out. So we, its contribution to our sum was positive. Now when we move over to node B, the same current I1 is now flowing into node B. So its contribution is negative. Similarly, for current I3, it was flowing into node A. So it was a negative contribution to the sum there. But it's flowing out of node B, so it has a positive contribution to this sum. Now let's look at node C, this one. Well, we've got the current I6 flowing out. We've got the current I2 flowing out in that direction. And we have the current 4I1 flowing out in that direction. And we'll set all of those equal to 0. So that's an example of how we use KCL to write down a set of equations that the currents in a circuit must satisfy. And we do that at each of these nodes in a very systematic way. Well, now let's use KCL to solve for an unknown current in a simple circuit. Now I'll label the node at the top of this circuit as node A, and I'll label the node at the bottom as node B. Now the equation at node A is, well, we have 10 milliamps flowing in, so I'll write that as negative 10 milliamps. I have 4I1 flowing in, so I'll write that as negative 4I1. And then we have I1 flowing out, and I'll write that as plus I1. And that's equal to 0. Now I should comment here that I have a habit of sometimes referring to the reference direction for a current as the direction that the current flows. Now to be more precise, the direction a current flows is determined by the reference direction for the current and the sign for the current. That is, whether the current is positive or negative value. Now, when writing KCL equations, you've probably heard me say that this current flows in, this current flows in, and this current flows out. But it would be more proper and less ambiguous to refer to these arrow directions as the reference direction. So I should say that the reference direction for this current is in the reference direction for this current is in, and the reference direction for this current is out of the node. Now the equation for node B, we have a reference direction out for 10 milliamps. A reference direction out for 4I1. And a reference direction in of I1. So we'll set that equal to 0. And you'll probably notice that this is the same as the equation we wrote for node A. Now we'll discuss this in more detail when we later talk about nodal analysis techniques for circuits. But we could use either one of these to then solve for I1. So let's see, this would give 3I1 is equal to negative 10 milliamps, or I1 is equal to negative 10 thirds of a milliamp. Well, as a final example, let's look at this circuit with two current sources, 
and three resistors. The currents through the resistors labeled R1 and R2 are unknown and labeled as I1 and I2, whereas the current through the resistor labeled R3 is known and has a value of 3 milliamps in the downward direction in our figure. Now let's label the nodes on the top as node A and B. Now there also appears to be two nodes on the bottom, but it's important to note that when nodes are connected by a wire, a simple short that has no devices between them, then they are in fact the same node. So we can think of this region as one node, and let's just call that node C. So this node has one, two, three, four wires coming together with it. Now the equation for node A we have two milliamps coming into the node so we'll write that as two, negative two milliamps. We have I2 leaving the node and we have I1 entering the node. Now we could rewrite this equation as negative I1 plus I2 is equal to 2 milliamps. Now let's look at node B. Now at node B we have I1 with its reference direction out of the node. We have 10 milliamps with the reference direction into the node. And we have 3 milliamps with the reference direction out of the node. and that's all equal to zero. So we could rewrite this as I1 is equal to 7 milliamps. Now if we look at node C, we have 2 milliamps leaving the node We have I2 entering the node. We have 10 milliamps leaving the node. And we have 3 milliamps entering the node. And that would be equal to 0. So that tells us that I2 is equal to 9 milliamps. Now in this case we're lucky that two of the equations, the equation at node B and the equation for node C, allow us to solve for each of the two, for both of the two unknown currents. Now we can also see though that the equation for node A is consistent with these, that is if we take I2 and subtract I1 we'll get 2 milliamps. So it's consistent but it's also redundant equations. So we were able to write down three nodal equations but we really only needed two of those. Now again we'll discuss this issue of independence in node current equations when we discuss in more detail nodal analysis techniques.